Hey everyone, it's Michael and Matt and Ruben from BullionNow, au, bringing you your favourite day of the week. It's a very fine day indeed. Friday it is. It is. Who would have thought we'd make it all the way here from last week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did wonder a few times, I've got to say. She's been another big week, another huge week. So lots of things going on in the bullion industry, um, particularly in Australian dollars. Gold yeah. going absolutely Bananas through the roof, you might even say. And silver is starting to make some moves as well. And so is platinum. Yeah, platinum. Geez, yeah, you've been chatting about that for a little while now. Yeah, it's just, it's just going off like a frog in a sock. (laughs) Frog in the sun. All of the above. Frog in the socks hiding up there. (laughs) Like a frog in a sock. It's um, it's been a huge week, and that's caused all sorts of chaos throughout the um, throughout the industry, throughout the shop, and throughout the world. James yes. Howard reckons it might be your fault. Yeah, it says, yeah, he goes on the telly and the spot price rises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very uh, interesting timing, wasn't it? Well, I, you know how um, we got the article in the Age, the yeah, newspaper, yep. what was that, two weeks ago, three mm. weeks ago, where I was slightly misquoted by them saying <laughs> gold, um, they, they said that I'd said, Gold was one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars a kilo, and oh, like look I'm thinking, you misquoted yeah. my. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, because it was about one hundred and four, one hundred and five, something like that yep. at that point, and uh, now it's well over one hundred sixteen thousand <laughs> a kilo. So what it should have read is Michael predicts within a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. it'll be over one hundred and sixteen thousand Australian a kilo. You let the uh, you let the script loose, Michael. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so this guy knows something we don't. Perhaps. <laughs> it. Unreal. Me and my crystal ball. Yeah. yeah. So how are you anyway, Matt? Yeah, very good. It's yeah. been a fascinating week to observe the, the the state of affairs. And it was also interesting to see, I think I sent it to you, Ruben. I don't know if you had a look at it, but um, to fall in line with your recent, you know, uh, national TV appearance, Fox News also did an article, did a segment on the whole Costco uh, supplying of gold. Mm. It's a frenzy at the moment, they're saying. They're doing over $200 million a month in gold sales. Wow. So they, they actually had a chat with a stacker, and it was it was kind of interesting. They actually said, so are you a- accumulating gold um, as a hedge against inflation and to offset how much currency is being printed at the moment? And it was very interesting to hear them speak in the mainstream media and use that sort of terminology. It wasn't, you know... Uh, so are you a lunatic? Do you have any yeah, face tattoos? Right. What are you trying to avoid here, sir? Yeah, that's right. You're <laughs> doing the actually, dodge. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. And as a number of people acknowledged with your ABC appearance, it certainly wasn't just a quick, okay, here's a 30-second segment. It was a proper, you know, a proper fleshed-out conversation, which was very exciting to see. It was. Um, we didn't have a lot of notice of that one. They phoned us. The night before, yeah, like it confirmed. I was trying to work it out with Rubes before. I think they, I think they confirmed it at about nine o'clock at night. Wow, for a six thirty-five a.m. segment. But we were only meant to be on there for four minutes. They mm. said max. Oh, really? And we were out there it was seven or eight minutes or something like that. Yeah, so. which I think in that kind of morning, you know, as people are waking up, slot, it's like you know we got to we got to update people on what's happening in the world. Let's jump from this to this to this yeah. to this. So that's yeah. quite a quite a, a stint. It was very much bang 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 in the studio, and then they got to us, and it kind of. Oh, well, yeah. let's, uh, well, <laughs> let's have a chat. And you brought some samples. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the samples that won them over. Absolutely. How could it not? <laughs> it is that thing. And it's funny. You should probably get... You need to turn that into a, a GIF or something, Ruben, when uh, Michael handed the presenter the kilo mm. of gold. The sort of eyes light up. <laughs> there is, it is that thing in action that we talk about so often here that there's something special about holding a kilo of gold. Yeah. So, and yeah. You still, it, it never ceases to amaze me, even when staff... Like or any of us are wandering around and we've got a kilo of gold in your hand, you kind of, you, you look different. You yeah, kinda... yeah, yeah, a little extra spring in the step. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so it's, it's just something magical about it. It's, yeah. it's funny. So yeah, it was funny watching these the two girls and they were great. The the two girls that interviewed me. Yeah, um, they you know made it very relaxing and all that sort of stuff. And they were just riffing. Yeah, there was Ma- no... Michael Carroll wanted to know if you got a list of questions before you no. went on. So I was a, I, I was actually hoping for a list of questions, and I kind of <laughs> hinted that that's what I wanted because I was I literally went in blind. I had yeah. no clue if this was going to be a hatchet job. Yeah, I had no clue like if it yeah. was going to be a puff Four piece. Corners, kind like, of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, are they going to grill me on Perth mint and their lettuce leaves? You yeah, know, like the whole. I had no clue when we were wandering in. 
Um, and when I sat down, you could see the two teleprompters there, and all it had was a, an intro for I can't remember what the intro was, but something like you know talking about bullion, how gold had risen, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, gold at record prices. Here to talk about it is Michael Pepper from um, from Bullion Now, yeah. sort of thing. And then, and just then dot dot dot. Yeah, it had a word there. I can't remember what what it was, but it was Phil. basically yeah, <laughs> yeah, applause. Ad-lib. And so they did that whole thing. And considering they really, th- this isn't a criticism of them, they really didn't have a lot of knowledge in the bullion area. Yeah. They actually carried themselves really well and they made the interview just flow along really nicely. Mm. So uh, that goes both ways though. And a lot of comments did acknowledge it. And I think, you know, having the amount of experience that you do in front of the camera with exactly what we're doing <laughs> right now. There's a bit of a difference probably, between probably this. helps. <laughs> well, look, this is getting there. This is a you know, there's a there's a few cameras, you know. Ruben does a good job setting all this up and it's a, a slightly more refined version of what we do here. Yeah, you see these I, I don't know people watching this can't see the cameras, but we've got three cameras on tripods. You walk into there, they had, I don't know, six eight cameras on these robotic arms and they're whizzing around at a million mile an hour. Yeah, just big versions of this. It's, it's uh, you know, with a few extra lights and they've got a, you know, nice tally screen behind them. If we have the budget, let's get some flying, flying in cameras. <laughs> yeah, Ruben's been asking for Step exactly for this bit. kind of setup. Oh, it was, it was a lot of fun. I was taking notes. Certainly not what we're here to discuss today though. That was one of the well, things. Exactly. Yeah, there, there'll be plenty of uh, throwbacks and references and that video, for anyone curious, is currently up on the channel as well so you can go back and view the whole thing in all, all its glory. Plus Absolutely. with a little bit of lead in. I see, like see Michael up on the yeah. on the big stage. Yeah. <laughs> I think what made me most nervous was the fact that my wife put it that my wife's got a like a family chat on Facebook or something like that. And it goes out to my nieces and nephews and oh, all that nice, sort of stuff. Yeah. So I was more terrified of screwing up in front of them <laughs> yep. was about being on national <laughs> national television. Yeah, it is which strange, is so that. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, but it was good fun overall. So yeah, and I think yeah. it's uh, like we always say because often, and we have done so on previous streams, is comment on the fact that just bullion being acknowledged in mainstream yeah. media is such a valuable gateway for people to develop an understanding and perhaps do a little more research and hopefully dig a little deeper and learn about it. So all of it, you know, is a positive. And it was especially exciting to see, you know, the BN purple up there on the big screen. That was very <laughs> cool. Very exciting. Well, it was. I think it was kind of leading on from what you're saying there. It was, um, you know, we bag out mainstream media quite a lot, if we're completely honest. Yeah. Um, but to actually have them take an interest, and not not a hatchet job interest, this was an, a basic interest, and you could tell just from the questions they were asking, where they started, you know, with jewelry and that type of stuff, you could see that there's a real lack of understanding in the general community of yeah. what bullion is and what stacking is and why you do it. So the more conversations that we can have, the more times that we can get out there and start, you know, banging the drum and saying, "Hey, look, this is this is gold. This is silver. This is something that." you know, should be a cornerstone of your investment portfolio. And these are the reasons why. The more we can do that and get it out there, the the better we're going to be, the better our... uh, I'm getting on a bit of a soapbox here, but the better our society is going to be because we're going to start taking responsibility and control and ownership of our own assets and our own futures. And that's what really floats my boat. So, you know, like all the nerves and all that sort of stuff, it was just a case of push through because this is actually what we believe in as a company. So yeah. let's just get on the horse and do it. And who would have thought, going back to the you know the beginning of this YouTube channel, <laughs> that you know, however many years later, you'd be on uh, national television. It yeah. doesn't surprise me. It felt inevitable given, you know, we all believe in what we talk about here. And it is a very important thing. It is becoming more and more prevalent as the business grows. So, yeah, it's very good to see. Yeah, it is. Um, I want to handball a little bit into that one of the um, one of the topics that was continuing to to be brought up on that on that TV presentation was uh, jewelry and things like that, and so we're kind of aware that that's potentially how a few people are going to be flowing into the the uh, the concept of stacking and things like that. Uh, and we had a uh, question in from I believe it was Samantha. Um, she says, hi, hi, Michael, Matt and Ruben. Um, where is the best place to sell nine carat gold jewelry? My local point, pawn shop offers $20 per gram on the nine carat gold jewelry, which is about half of spot for nine yeah. carat gold. Is that normal? Is it anywhere better than pawn shops? Thanks for your advice and happy Friday. So, you know, it obviously, you know, we, we tend to focus on bully and the pure side and occasionally 22 carat, but, you know, people will... Th- there is still value in this nine carat, 18 Absolutely carat, you know, all, all these other um, purities of gold. 
how, if people do want to sell it or convert it into something, how would how would you recommend going about it? I know you may, we may not be able to say specific names of businesses necessarily, but yeah, where 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 would someone start looking? Well, answer her first question. Unfortunately, yes, it's normal. Mm. Um, that sort of pricing, um, really, unfortunately. Um, and we can't even plug ourselves because we wouldn't buy that back. No, as, we, as we, don't, we don't touch scrap jewellery or, or anything along those sort of lines um, intentionally. Um, look, there are better places to sell it. A pawnbroker is not where I would start uh, or I, I would suggest you start. Um, I, I don't think she identifies where she is at no. all. Um, but you need to go to a specialist scrap dealer. Um, and look, they are a little difficult to find. You'll probably have to travel to a, a capital city. So if you're in Melbourne, you know, there's there's a couple of them in, in our building. And look, you're not going to get spot or anything along those sort of lines because they do have to be refined down and all the expenses incurred with that and so on and so forth. But you will certainly get better than that 50%. You're, you're looking at probably 85, 90, even higher sometimes, depending on the purity and quality of what you what you're trying to sell in. So... Don't go to the kiosks in the shopping centres. Don't go to the pawnbrokers. Unless you've got a very, very good relationship with a very good jeweller, I wouldn't go in with, into them either. You're looking at trying to find some of these specialty scrap um, metal places and it's a case of picking up the phone, I'd suggest, and just dialing around a bit. I know you want to add anything to no, that, Matt? Perfectly summed up, yeah. There's a nice little addition there from, from Ben Harvey. Uh, they say, I asked at a pawn shop uh, yesterday out of interest for my nine-carat gold necklace. Um, when I asked if he pays spot price, he raised his eyebrows that I knew about spot price. Um, he just said we'll have to give it uh, on the day. Um, but yeah, the, I, I do like that concept, and we mentioned it recently in our, you know, basically what is spot price video of you know when you are selling back, ask that question. It it lets people know that you you know what you're talking about. You, you're yeah. not clueless to the concept of this fluctuating price, and you know it, it forces them to give you that. You know, in in Samantha's case, um, you know uh, to to, to that she knows that that is about half of the spot price. You know, it, it arms you with that information and that's a really good thing. Even just knowing the lingo, like knowing yeah. the language. I've, I've seen on several occasions um, scrap dealers in various forms up their prices purely because someone started talking the correct language. Because mm. oh, it's, oh, okay, yeah. this person actually knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Well, we better play ball yeah. rather than going, oh, you know, this rabbit doesn't know a thing sort yep. of thing and, and, and dropping the price and taking advantage. So it's not a bad idea to do a bit of research, know what spot price, like know, know what spot is. So, you know, you, you can talk the language, but also know the numbers. So spots, you know, uh, today it's uh, well over thirty six hundred dollars Australian an ounce. So going in with that arm, so when they start saying, "Oh, we're going to offer you, you know, five dollars a gram," you can go, "Well, hang on a sec, you know, spots thirty six hundred dollars an ounce. That's uh, you know, that's a bit harsh." So um, we have Andy over on the uh, the emails. Um, if you email in your questions to live at billionnow dot com dot au, um, Andy has provided quite a number of great questions in the past, and uh, yeah, he's. Uh, flung a couple more through. Um, the first one we're actually going to touch on a little bit later is a bit of a separate topic, so we'll come back to that one. Um, but his second one there is, um, we are seeing the bull running gold at the moment due to central bank demand and loss of faith in the banking system. What is driving the demand for silver? Is it just taking along as the little brother or is industry demand playing a big part of it? I'm hesitant buying more on the belief that the global economy will slow down in the next 12 to 24 months. So basically, yeah, you know, he, he can see the reasons for, for gold. Um, why, why is silver um, chugging along quite nicely at the moment as well? You want to lead off on that one, Matt? Well, or? I actually saw, uh, I think it's no secret, and I'd, I've suggested this to a number of people when they're just starting out with uh, entering the world of precious metals, looking for useful educational tools. And one of the channels or the I guess content creators is Mike Maloney mm. is very well known and in a video I think he put it up today actually there was a, a nice little graphic and I it's become very apparent to me that I'm a very visual learner I love seeing a little uh, either a chart or some kind of graphical <laughs> representation and he had an interesting one the gentleman that was presenting it wasn't Mike but I'm, it was maybe one of his staff and it had on it how much above ground supply there was of both gold and silver represented in cube form, as well as how much of that was actually tradable. So it hadn't been used in some form of you know, industrial application or something like that. And it was quite interesting to see that it was comparatively a smaller amount of silver than it was gold. But it, it gets... 
it's such a tricky one because so much of that has to be extrapolated based on mm. certain sets of information. So I always take, uh, having said, despite having said that I love a, a graphic, I always have to go into it with a little bit of skepticism and wonder, okay, where is this information being drawn from and how accurate yeah, is that? How important. can you definitively determine how much above ground supply has gone to solar panels or electric vehicles. I, I imagine you, you'd have to draw conclusions based on how many Teslas are being produced on any given month. And th there are so many variables, but it, it was very interesting to see. So it also feels like we often say that silver is like the more comparatively a little more erratic cousin or brother sibling of gold. So I feel like we're finally starting to see a little bit of that in action. Yeah. But, so what what do you think of it all, Michael? Look, I I think I think part of it is that gold jumps up, silver follows four to six weeks later. I think mm. you know, you you can almost chart that over time. So you tend to see that dragging up of, of silver. What I find interesting this time is platinum has been dragged up as well. Yeah. And that that doesn't usually happen. So there's a lot of things I hate saying it's different this time, but there's a lot of things that are saying to me it's different this time to what we normally yeah. normally go with. So I think we are seeing an. In, uh, I think we're seeing an anticipation of an increase in demand for silver, and I think that's helping drive the price. I think we're seeing an overall interest in that physical asset area. So that's, you know, like one thing breeds another. It's never you, you can never say it's one thing. It's mm. you know it's two, three, four, five, six things that are triggering secondary and and third level yeah. um, things as well. So I think we're seeing a lot of that come along as well. Um, Will it stay is the big question. Is yeah. this, uh, you know, just a, a, a burst yep. um, or is this something that actually may may take off? Um, we don't know at this stage is the short answer. I famously um, called a pullback at $3,300 Australian an ounce and yeah. uh, don't I look like a Muppet. But you know, that's the, gold. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, right? Because you can only go, you can only make these calls and things like that based on the available information that you have. Mm. And something interesting, uh, a bit of a friend of the channel, I might even say, um, Two Is One did a yep. video and specifically outlined, uh, he was recently at the, uh, help me out Ruben, maybe that facility, the new facility, it's all state of the art, Vault, they did a tour video. Is that the, yes. the SD Bull? Yeah. yeah, he was there with a number of other channels and they were predominantly silver oriented channels. And he said he felt a bit uncomfortable because he'd publicly said that he, he thinks silver sucks. <laughs> 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 and, when, uh, yeah. <laughs> and when he explained himself, it was basically a case of he felt that silver hasn't really filled the same role that gold has historically, whereas gold, you know, being a hedge against inflation, a safe haven uh, place to have your money positioned, and it served him very well, whereas silver has comparatively massively underperformed and still not, you know, when people talk about uh, hard assets that haven't reached their, I think it's the 1980s highs. Uh, Mark Maloney often talks about that, that silver's, you know, lagging behind significantly. Yeah, but you've got to look. I really hate it when we get, start going down mm, this road because... I love it. People talk <laughs> about, you know, oh, silver's su suppressed, you know, it's mm. manipulated, it's all that sort of stuff. Yeah. If you want to see manipulation, look in the 80s. You know, we just we've just gone through the anniversary of the Hunt Brothers, thirty year anniversary of the Hunt Brothers yeah. um, being forced out of the market. Yep. Like the the manipulation that was going on at that point, both by the Hunt Brothers and also by the the government organisations trying to control the bubble. Mm. Um, you know, you go back further into the into the turn of the century, through all the way through to the nineteen sixties, I think it was where it was legislated in US law that the government had to buy um, silver from the silver mines at a price above the spot price. So, you know, that, you can't call that anything but manipulation of, of mm. silver spot in a positive direction rather than a negative direction. Yeah. So to start coming out and saying, oh, but we haven't seen the highs of the 80s, yeah, but in some ways that's a good thing because yeah. we're seeing raw prices... <laughs> I'm going to get shot down for this. Are you going to say, <laughs> you're seeing more raw price than you are manipulated price. It's just mm. it's it's in the other direction. It's not in the in the up direction. It's in the downwards direction. So which is which is the true price? The manipulation of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, or the manipulation that's going on now? 
Ooh, that's hey. a good one. See, I like this. I like a bit of spicy conversation <laughs> on the stream. It, it is very interesting. So you would suggest then that there is significantly less, or, because you can't say that there's no manipulation whatsoever I of the price. I would say there's different manipulation. Yeah. yeah. But which so, is more so, correct? Well, I guess the real question, right, and this is something that people often speculate on, particularly on YouTube, when they say things like, oh, you know, the, the whole slingshot analogy, that the price has been suppressed and suppressed and it's all going to come to a head and explode all in one big magnificent week or month of price action. Do you think something like that is probable? I, I don't, mm. um, which is why I get I, I try and avoid the topic of silver quite often and pricing yeah. and manipulation. Oh, we're here now. We've come I, this far. I get myself into a lot of trouble here. <laughs> Look, I think you've ultimately, irrespective of the manipulation, and I think you're right, you, you, like there have been court cases go through where yeah. major companies around the world have been proven guilty of manipulating the silver market. So to yeah. say there's no manipulation, you know, you, you've got your head in the clouds. Yep. You know, <laughs> like it's just, it's you, you're barking up the wrong tree. But to say that the price is solely the result mm. of manipulation and if that comes off, we'll springboard much yeah. higher, I think is ignoring the fundamentals of silver. Um, gold is a very stable asset. Um, you guys have heard me say this a million and one times. It's stable because it is 90 plus percent, it's over 98 percent, I think now, investment grade. The metal is used purely for investment. is very little that's used in industry. So it's a very stable demand because it's you and I all the way through to central banks. We buy it, we hold it. We don't, we don't trade it constantly. We don't use it up and have to buy more. We buy it, we put it in the safe. It's, it's stable. It's, it, it's the supply demand mm. um, ratio is fairly stable. Silver is kind of the halfway mark, and I use platinum as the other end of gold. So silver is 33%-ish, about a third of it is investment grade. The other two thirds is industry. If you, if you look at investment being you and I buying it in central banks or large businesses or whatever, buying it for investment pur purposes and locking it away to stabilize the price, you've got two thirds that is being actively traded and actively used by industry we, whose demand um, ebbs and flows depending on you know the economy and taxes and government um, you know favoring or unfavoring whatever that term is mm. um, you know what's going on in other countries weather cycles all these sorts of things can can impact the, the supply and demand of two thirds of the um, of the silver that's out there so. Even if, it, even if the story for silver on an investment basis is just fantastic, you know, and, and you increase the interest in, in silver by 20% more people and there's 20% mm. more demand in that investment side, you're actually only increasing the overall demand investment by about 6%. So yeah, it'll have, a, it'll have an impact on price, but it's not going to drive it, you know, it's not going to rocket to the yeah. moon. But if you look at, if you look at the... Um, at the industrial demand, and that's impacted by 20%, that's an overall picture of, you know, somewhere around the 12, 13, 15, even up to 20% of the total number of, um, of, of uh, demand on that silver. And that can, that can actually have a large impact on mm. the price. So in the example I was trying to paint, the interest increases in investment, but it decreases in industry because there's a drought. Um, you know, like the the economy's stuffed, so lots of businesses are shutting down. Those types of things, that will that extra or extra um, supply less demand in the industrial side will swamp any any more buying on the investment side, and it'll drive the price down. Yeah, so so what we actually need is a we need to increase the amount of industrial applications for silver. Absolutely, increase the so. So that's, more that's people where, investing in is is not going to be as impactful as more it, not solely as impactful ah. as if the industry gets up off its knees and actually starts functioning properly with clear air. So you know no government interference. Mm. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a free marketer, yeah. marketer <laughs> yeah. here, but you know less government interference. You know, I mean th there was suppression of, of silver demand um, throughout Asia because China was 
this a couple of years ago, but China was going through a drought, so they couldn't produce the hydroelectricity that they needed to do for industry. So they were restricting a lot of the industries to say, well, you, you can only operate on Mondays and Wednesdays, and you can only operate on, yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because they couldn't provide enough power into the industrial areas. So you do that, and it shuts down the, the demand of silver. So you've got to have all sorts of things going in your favour for industry to get up on its feet and actually start sucking that silver through the system. Once they start doing that, absolutely, you can see fairly large movements in silver price. And that's my whole argument for platinum because mm. platinum is almost solely and exclusively an industrial metal. So it's, the, it's diametrically opposed to gold. So because it's so much industrial demand, it can have fairly large movements in, in its commodity price yep. purely based on if industry's firing or if it's not and what new technologies are coming down the pike and what technologies are going out. To take us back to silver, when, um, when photographic film went out, mm. the demand for silver dropped hugely. <clears throat> yep. That also goes back to, you know, like Mike Maloney saying or this, this comment of saying, you know, we've got to get back to the demand of the 80s. Well, you've got to look at... We're not going to go back to films and developing yeah. films. So that silver Speak demand yourself, is completely... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ruben loves there's, it. There's a few isolated <laughs> incidences yeah. like yourself there, Ruben. But, That's not you know, quite the uh, thriving industry. Yeah, yeah. Was. You know, a little more was, niche. Yeah. When I was a teenager, it, everyone had a camera. You know, twenty. you took 24 photos. You didn't know what they looked like and how good they were until yeah. two weeks later when you got them developed and got them back. And everyone did that. We're not going back to that. Mm. That demand is never going to come back at that level. It's like saying the price of um, horse buggies or, you know, horse whips and yeah. crops and that sort of stuff. You know, it's not back to the demand that we had in the 1870s. Well, we're not going back to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen. Oh, wait and see. Until after Skynet. <laughs> yeah, a new trend collapse. might come out. <laughs> That's it. This has um, been good. This has been one of the most explosive <laughs> lead-ins to a live stream ever. You say lead-ins, so we're already half an hour in. This I, is I, 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 to, in my mind, we, we've only just started. I think we need to go through some, uh, some viewer we, questions yeah, rather hit, than hit, us hit rabbiting the chat, on. But we, we, we really do good. because we have a lot of dedicated viewers um, in our chat. But right now we have Desi in chat who is – his wife is, is – uh, Giving birth. Yeah, you have out <laughs> like, of What are you doing in the chat, man? <laughs> well, we spoke about this today. I just chatted to him on the phone. I said, get into it, mate. Um, <laughs> Switch off the phone for a little bit. Um, what a guy. And says that um, if my child is born during the stream, I will name them either Michael, Matt, or Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of gender. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, I would wish that upon your child. Thanks, mate. hi. Um, appreciate the dedication, Desi, and uh, yeah, hopefully they look back on this and uh, yeah, they can uh, see what was happening in the. Uh, that would be very cool, market. actually, yeah, if they were born during the stream, and you can show them this and say, you know, the lads were chatting about you before. That's or it. You, yeah, when you came into the world. There you go. That'll well, be nice. Mate, all the best, and let us know how it all goes, and send us in a photo. Yeah, that'd be very nice. Yeah, it would be. I saw James um, before commenting on um, if we were going to lose touch with the common man. Yeah. Now we were oh, national yeah. celebrities. Jeez, look so, at So, no, we won't. That implies stress, we were ever in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. And Monitor Amata was saying, does anyone remember how the live stream started? So, live in, yeah. uh, live in lockdown. Yeah. And I remember it with some fond memories. Yeah, sitting on a chair with two broken wheels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now we don't have wheels on our chairs. Things have changed. Um, Aussie Rob wants to know if we have any more of those uh, books coming, the uh, the gold books. Um, I believe I've got a few. Don't, don't just say, yeah. oh, I've got one sitting None there. None of this vague no, no, stuff. No, no. We need hard yeah. intel. Okay. <laughs> so there, sometime this weekend, I will list um, about... Four more that have been cancelled from um, orders, so yep. keep an eye out on the on the web for that. Um, I have talked to I'm having a mental blank. Kim, um, I talked to Kim the other day. He's coming in to do um, signing in two weeks, so he's going to sign all the books. I'm going to try and team up and actually say, hey, if you're in the local area, come and meet Kim, yeah. um, the author of the book. Yeah. He doesn't know that yet unless he's watching this because I didn't actually say that. We need, but to, we need to get him in at some stage for these signatures, we promised. Yeah, yeah. so he's yeah. coming in in two weeks All to right, do it. Cool. He's away um, for work for the next two weeks. So he'll be back sometime around the 22nd, 23rd, something like that. If you requested right. a signature, your book will be uh, waiting yeah. for that. It will be. So, yeah, you won't get your book if you've requested a signature for a few weeks. That's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's talking – he's going to bring us in some more or he said he might be able to bring us in some more. 
and we're talking about helping him do a uh, another run, another printing. Yeah, so it'll be very good. That'll hopefully, be very there'll be well some received. more available. Yeah, sounds like Desi's wife may have superseded the uh, the during stream naming. Yeah, uh, definitely thing. not. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, at, at the moment she gets the say. <laughs> well, I, I certainly didn't battle my wife at this point. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. <clears throat> oh dear. Um, one of the other things that people have been talking about in the last week um, is Zimbabwe has uh, yeah. has been in the news recently, yeah. and I'll uh, quickly throw up an article while we uh, we talk about it. Um, they have gone back to a new gold-backed currency that they're calling Zig. Sounds very uh, <laughs> like crypto-esque to me, but yeah, yeah. It stands for Zimbabwe Gold. Um, and yeah, they're they're backing their their currency with um, um, with this new gold-backed currency. It, it those two notes on the left mm, look yeah. like they're old notes. The two on the oh, left are the hyperinflation ones, for yeah. sure. This is potential. Oh, maybe it's just the same artwork. It looks like the, uh, the hundred trillion, doesn't it? It does. I mean, this is just a photo I pulled off the oh, internet. Oh, maybe it's just it a is. stock. Oh, so yeah, it's just a stock, Good stock on image. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's, it's an interesting... I think it'll you, be can tell it we, you can with. tell we're a pair of nerds. That's the first thing we see. Don't read the text of the article straight to the <laughs> bank note. Yeah, you said you were a visual person. I should have uh, suspected. Um, but it's a, I think it'll be an interesting almost case study because you know it's, it's been quite a while since this has kind of been tried in this kind of size. Um, but it's also... Um, you know they've been doing things a little bit interesting for a while. They've they've obviously gone through hyperinflation with their own currency, um, but they're using. I think it even says it in this uh, bit that I've got here. Um, but they, they they still use a, a massive amount of US dollars in their in their transactions. Um, and I was reading um, on the BBC article. It was also very interesting that they use things like um, like pens and candies and things like that um, instead of change. Yeah, um, so really? they, they, they had a shortage of some of the smaller coins and things so they give back physical items as change and I, I think buy now for silver get a Snickers well that's it <laughs> unreal well, you know the, yeah because I need we, another Snickers yeah, mate. maybe we should start doing that <laughs> um, there's a okay David's calling me out it's from 1987 there we go uh, so um, but the you know, I, I think that's what a lot of stackers are kind of thinking. They're they're picturing that gold back currency. They're they're picturing that <coughs> that trade for for goods and, and things like that. So I think it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out. Um, the only thing I don't know, Michael, you had a little bit of a look at this. Do you know, like, what, like it's one thing to say it's backed. Do we have yeah. any kind of ratio on you know? No, they did. They were fairly sparse on details. It doesn't say, you know, if you can go like in in the good old days, you mm. could actually take your note into mm. like in australia you could take your bank note into the bank and exchange it for that equivalent amount of gold yep. it doesn't say you can do those sorts of things so it's a little i mean it's only a mainstream news article so it could be you know it's not it that they're hiding anything it's just yeah, yeah it's just light on detail so <clears throat> we'd need to know quite a bit more about it but from i think you're right i think it's an interesting experiment i i I don't know how it'll go. I think it can't go any worse than what they had. Yeah. Well, they've um, had a just spot quietly. price increase, so I think yeah. you know. Yeah. I think it's the first time in a while that they've. Uh, that's it. They're, the currency is becoming worth more. As. A... But how does that? Yeah, th this is where it becomes <laughs> tricky because now is my twenty zig worth more? So that drives inflation in the market based on the increasing spot price. Yeah, what has the zig gone up against the US dollar then? Well, in theory, it should have, mm. but has it? <laughs> well, this is the other part: is is it going to be recognised as gold backed? Because if everyone ignores the fact that it's gold backed, mm. we're just in the same scenario as we were before. Well, as and as you say, if there's no avenue, if you can't go into either your local bank or your, you know, the reserve bank equivalent and convert it into gold, yeah, what is the what's the go? Would be my question. Yeah, it, so I, I think it'll be something to look at. We'll, we'll see mm. kind of how it actually uh, yeah, transpires. We'll I think they only on had it. 21 days or something to return their um their old notes and and get them you know into these new yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Too bad if you miss the announcement, yeah. aren't you? are on holiday for a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I, I've always wondered with things like that. It's like, yeah, you know, sorry. <laughs> all, all, the, all the money, all the currency you had is now worth nothing. Yeah. Sorry about it. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't be the first country to do that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's a... Interesting one. It'll be interesting. I I, I want to see how it works. If anyone mm. watching this is in in the neighbourhood in Zimbabwe, let us yeah. know how it's working over there. Um, maybe we should go there on the way to Berlin next year, mate. On the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all right. 
Go it's a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd love to see. Like, it, it's 12 months' time, 18 months' time when when it's, you know, part of the daily grind that I want to know how it's how it's working. It, mm. It's a great idea. Um, it's it's great to see them trying some different things because they've been through hell and back. Mm. Mm. Um, so I, I certainly hope it works for the country. They certainly deserve it over there. They've done it tough. There's there's still uh, there's still someone you know, Michael, that has, has yeah. gone through it over there that I really want to get for an interview and at some And still stage. has family over there. So I was just thinking yeah. I might reach out to them and see uh, see what their thoughts are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the other thing is it, it almost instantly puts gold completely mainstream. Um, for anyone living in Zimbabwe because it's suddenly, well, hey, what is this new change? Oh, it's gold-backed. Like, suddenly everyone is talking about gold yeah. in, in this one country. Like, you know, yeah. for, for Australia to do something like that, I think would be, yeah, like, in as far as everyone suddenly talking about gold, that would just be, you know, crazy. Well, everyone's talking about gold now because we're on, on the ABC. ABC. Yeah, yeah true, unreal. So. Yeah, it's at the front of everyone's mind. Yeah, and speaking so of, when, when, you, when we talk about a gold-backed currency, in my mind, because I associate gold and silver... Is there a place for silver in that? Yeah. So in the event that, let's say, it became more of a com- uh, more commonplace for countries to adopt a gold standard, do you think that's going to have a significant impact on the price of silver? Where we where we say the retail demand, the industrial demand, what sort of? I, I suppose it depends on what level of backing you're talking, right? Yeah. As to Absolutely. whether or not that has a meaningful impact. Yeah. Look, I, I think it will. Again, it comes a little bit back to any advertising is good advertising. Yeah. So absolutely. if we're all talking about it, mm-hmm. people are talking about it, becomes front of mind. They start looking at, you know, how do I invest in this? How mm. do I buy this? Yeah. Those types of conversations start happening. So I think absolutely it will have an impact on it. Will it have a major impact? So gold goes from, you know, 40 Australian dollars an ounce to 400 Australian dollars an ounce. I, I don't believe it's going to have, it would have that level of impact. Yeah. But you, you kind of, there's been no silver-backed denominated currencies that I'm aware of for probably 50 years. So mm. I, I, we don't really have any relevant data to, yeah. to stay either way. Having said, yeah, no, I don't want to go any further on that one because <laughs> I'll stick my foot in it. <laughs> we, just, we, we don't really have the data to, to yeah. actually hang your hat on. Yep. I think you could argue this one either way. Yep. Um, we had Andrew and Kath. Um, some fans of the channel sent through an, an email um, regarding Perth uh, and some of their, their sales numbers. Um, it says, Perth Mint's March gold sales hit lowest level in nearly half a decade. Um, and they're citing because of the, the increase in, in, in gold price. And I kind of wanted to... I'll probably pitch this as a poll in, the se- in a second. But, yes. um, <laughs> um, but I want to I wanna ask people if, if they actually want the gold price to go up. And, you know, I, th- I think some people will be sitting there at home going, well, of course, you know, we're, we're buying this so that, you know, it counters inflation and it goes up over time. But we're seeing, and I've seen even seen a couple of comments in chat um, of people saying, well, hey, you know, can it, can it slow down a bit? I'm, I'm still trying to stack here. Um, you know, do we actually want it to go up? And I think even like as we've been talking here on stream, someone's uh, actually sent through another email basically asking this um, this exact question. Yeah, they say here, uh, with the price increasing increasing quite quickly and it having the potential to hit 4K soon, do we actually want this? Is it likely to increase premiums as percentage as opposed to a fixed amount as the value of gold starts to have an impact on stuff like insurances, securities, and in general with the hassle of having to store crazy amounts of value? So yeah, I'll, I'll put that one up as a... Um, as a as a poll, because I'm interested to to see what people think. There's so many topics you've just covered there. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's the next couple of streams. Yeah. So sorted. look, I mean, the the low level of Perth Mint um, production is fairly easily explained. In that, I mean, you were, you bought you both were in the shop in March. Mm. What was March like? It was a very interesting time. Like there was. <sighs> There was. How many buybacks did we have compared to sales? There was a lot more sellbacks happening. There was there, like like that was were through the roof. I think I asked you that on stream. I said, "Can this, can this continue, Michael? Like, how? At no. what point? At what point does this, um, like seesaw the other way?" And I think it's. This is such a fascinating time and I, I've said this a couple of times. Like, There are times that you live through and the, obviously that we've lived through so a couple of big examples come to mind. But I think this is one of those times that we're going to look back on in a year, two, three years down the track and say, wow, that was such a, 
like intense. A, <laughs> yeah, very, very intense and possibly, I don't want to sound extreme. I don't want to sound like, a, you know, a, a YouTuber here, but possibly <laughs> even like a, a bit of a transformative period to live through. Like particularly if this, what we're seeing and what we're talking about with both gold and silver prices, if this, if it were to continue to go up and that becomes a new normal and, you know, like you said, Michael, when people were saying, oh, it'll never get through 2000 Australian dollars for an ounce of gold and I'll never pay it. It'll never happen and it won't be a thing. Now we have people coming in the store saying, oh, could you imagine getting yeah. a bargain like that, paying only 1900 Australian for an ounce? Whereas I think you're hard pressed to get a half ounce for that now. Yeah, it's close. So I... Th- I yeah, this is one of those times where I think it'll be really, really interesting one way or the other to look back on and say, well, during that time, the things that were happening and, you know, hopefully, above all else, the amount of awareness that was raised in, in this regard, it's, uh, it's was, really interesting. I was talking to a, a major, one of the big traders um, this week um, about, you know, gold and, and the price and silver and that type of stuff. And he made the comment that um, their research department is saying this is a once in 30 year um, wow. breakout of the gold price so they're saying this has got serious legs this is going to keep running maybe that's why i have that, that this feeling because i'm just over 30 years old yeah so, so and is... so in my mind it, it, it does yeah, yeah. Tell, tell him that i think i agree yeah. I, think he's, I think he's onto something because i've got just an interesting sort of feeling on, on it all Matt's it's, assessed it's, the vibe you oh, agree yeah, i have i have it's, it's getting, it's getting interesting. Check. Yeah, yeah i like it but it's like there's so many things I want to cover in this topic. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm brain scatting all over the place. Um, <laughs> but there's there's so many. <sighs> Just go one step at a time. <laughs> start from Deep the start. Breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Yeah. Now look, I mean, I think we are. I think we've seen. You know, a few weeks ago on live stream, we were talking about the quantity of buybacks compared to the quantity of sales. Yeah. And this goes back to the Perth Mint turnover. Mm. You know, we were probably buying back nine times what we were selling on any one day. Yeah. Like that, that is unsustainable. But what that meant was, and I'm not trying to say we're the biggest customer of Perth Mint or anything along those sort of lines, but from BN's perspective, we pretty much shut down ordering from Perth Mint because we had so much coming through the door yeah. that we physically couldn't buy from the likes of Perth Mint. So that instantly means Perth Mint's going to start winding down there because mm. we we I I know we weren't the only ones that were winding back yeah. um, our ordering because I you know you, the industry's fairly small. We all talk to each other, so mm. um, you know like that's that explains why I, I wouldn't get paranoid about it it was a hu- humongous amount incoming into the industry rather than being taken out mm. now we've moved beyond that 3300 and that seemed to be the trigger for that was 3300 everyone went right that's it i'm out i'm getting rid of some i'm yep. you know i'm converting into cash or whatever they were converting into now we're at 36 we're seeing the complete opposite to a point where we're starting to say again you know we're running out of buybacks we actually need to get some more in you know yeah. they're, they're just not appearing anymore so I, I know from BN's perspective, we had a I had a meeting with Adam this morning, and Adam, for those that don't know, is our um, stock controller. And I was saying to him, how much have we got out that, you know, we've we've bought from Perth Mint, but they haven't delivered yet, not for any other reason than, you know, it, it takes time to actually, mm. you know, prep the order and, and ship it out to us, and it's it's seven times greater than it was only a couple of weeks ago of wow. what they owe us in in physical metal, so. We are definitely seeing the other side of the coin now. It's a, this mm. huge demand um, trying to suck that gold out of the industry. Yeah. It also leads to something else that um, I, I did a, we don't know if we'll show it, but I did a, 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 a um, what do we call it? A, a <coughs> Musings of a Bullion Dealer. That's I did one of those at some unearthly hour this morning when I was driving <laughs> to work. It was about three o'clock or something this morning. Um, and I was rabbiting on about, um, the price of the fact that we're at all-time highs and should I buy at mm. all-time highs? And there's a the couple of comments that were going through before um, and you mentioned a similar one of, you know, $2,000. People get really, really stressed about, oh, you know, what if I buy it, you know, I buy it today and I'm going to pay the top of the market and I know it's going to go down tomorrow because that's just my sort of luck. Yep. You know, I buy today and it drops, you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks over the next couple of days and, oh, like I just, you know, I, I don't know if I should buy and, I, and they talk themselves out of it. <laughs> Even if you paid 
19, and I go back to this one because I know it fairly well, but you go back to 1971. If you paid the peak of the market in 1971, you were paying about $40 an ounce. Would you really care today if you'd paid $40 an ounce and it had dropped by 10%, 20% the next day and you paid the very peak of the market for that year, even for the next two years, you'd paid yeah. the very peak. Yeah, sure, you'd have a bit of sook, a bit of a sook about it for two years. Yeah. But 10 years later, 20 years later, 50 years later, you'd be going... Mate, I'm a certifiable genius. <laughs> like, I paid 40 bucks an ounce for gold and look at it now. It's yeah. $3,600 an ounce. I think a lot of the time, at least for me, it comes down to what I'm then not able to buy in that current moment because of the amount it's gone up. So say I do pay you know, far higher right now in comparison. If I'm then two or $300 shorter than I would have been separately, you know, that's, that's you know... That's that's plenty of food. That's plenty of entertainment. That's you know, and, and I think if you start if you, if you get too zoomed in as to thinking about that day that week, um, it it starts to hurt a lot <laughs> with those spot price movements. And that's kind of because we're living in the moment. That's where it hurts. But that's it. Your 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 advice is basically almost to to zoom out a bit and think about it in that that really long term as opposed to that day that week. And that's that's a hard thing yeah. to do because I well, I struggle with that for for myself. There is because there's, there's obviously an opportunity cost in the short term. I could have bought. You know, two ounces instead of an ounce and three quarters. Yeah. Mm. Um, so there's absolutely that there. But you've got to take your eye off that or you're going to end up with hair my color by the time you're 21. You've got to actually step back and go, I'm not buying this for the next two days. I'm buying this for the next 10 years or yeah. wh whatever your time frame is. And I tell you, if you're buying it for any less than six months, don't buy it. And that's a bullion dealer telling you not to buy gold. If your time frame is six months or less, don't buy physical gold. Because you will get caught up in this in this churn um, and you'll get stressed out and it's not worth it. What you need to do is say, well, look, I'm buying this for two years' time, in, for five years' time, for 10 years' time, to hand down to my grandkids. Whatever it is, whatever your time frame is, and stop stressing about, oh, it might go down $5 tomorrow. What, mm. if, I, what, if, it, what if it's $5 cheaper? Because the opportunity cost, yes, there's an opportunity cost in the short term, but there's also an opportunity cost in the long term in that, I, I, I fudged around so much that I never actually made the deal. And now, instead of having an ounce and three quarters, where I possibly could have had two ounces if I'd waited two days, the fact that I fussed around so much about that, five years later, I have no ounces. And it doesn't matter mm. that gold's gone to the moon or silver or platinum or whatever yeah. it is you're buying because you didn't buy it in the first place. That yeah. is the far bigger risk that you're going to face there. Yeah. Alrighty, I want to keep this um, this one fairly short because it's a little bit of a follow up to a discussion we had last week talking about um, inflation and basically whose fault it is. Um, long story short, and Michael, you pointed me to some some things going on in Queensland um, at the moment, um, and so I've I've grabbed a couple of headlines um, from from that topic, um, just talking about kind of the, the changes in that in that sector and kind of what's happening. Um, but you, you'll do a, a far better job at. Um, You're really trying to drop me in this. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so the comment was made last year, and last year, last week, and I, I was a little bit flippant with it, and I, I shouldn't have made the comment because we didn't have time, and it wasn't the platform to discuss. Um, and it was a comment around, you know, the fact that I don't believe inflation is caused by, or the fact that big businesses are price gouging through either using inflation as an excuse or actually driving inflation because they're price gouging, because. The, the headlines say that, the, the government is saying that, the, the mainstream media, here I am bagging mainstream media again, um, <laughs> the mainstream media are saying that, but when you actually look at the, the surveys that they, are, um, that they are quoting, the statistics that they are quoting, when you look at the underlying of it, it's just not factually true. The uh, example that Rubes put up there was the, um, the new... Um, Queensland government uh, requirements for if you're a uh, you're a construction company and you wish to bid for government um, contract work with the Queensland government, and they are like it, th these are huge increases. You know, the pay rises of ten dollars an hour, um, an extra thousand dollars a week to work away from home. Um, you have to have a five percent irrespective you get a five percent pay rise on the first of july every year between now and 2027 these are where the um these are where the the, the price rises are occurring 
It's this is huge. You look at you know we're based in Victoria. The land tax that we pay, the increase in land tax that we've had in Victoria is far greater than than the price rises that I'm seeing personally in the supermarkets. Um, you know, you go back to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and I don't want to bore everyone like, by drilling down in these things, but th this is where you've got to go with it. You know, you, you look at um, the CPI figures, so the inflation figures from December 2022 to December 2023, because we haven't had the next one released. That's as, as the latest that you can get. The headline inflation was 4.1%. So that was the increase of, um, of inflation overall. And it was basically the same inflation number that we were getting for um, increases in groceries, excluding tobacco and alcohol, it was about that 4 to 4.1 percent. The average wage went up over that period of time 4.5 percent. So it's not you can see there that the the supermarkets and places like that aren't massively increasing um, prices over and above what the costs are increasing because fuel's gone up more than 4% in that time. Wages have gone up more than 4% in that time. And yes, we can all pull out figures. And look, I'm, I don't agree with the CPI figures overall anyway, From a, and I've said this many times where I think you should, you should calculate your own CPI um, for your family because you know, CPI includes uh, you know, international travels drop by 8% or something like that. Well, most families don't travel internationally all the time, so that's almost an irrelevant statement. You know, the, the average family wants to know how much the price of bread's gone up and how much the price of milk's gone up and how much the price of their meat's gone up and all those types of things. So you need to calculate it for yourself. But even when you do that, you will see that it's not so much price gouging. You look at the price of meat going up, and I'm, I'm going to argue against myself in this statement. <laughs> you, look at, you look at the price of meat going up, and it's gone up quite a bit in the supermarket. But then have a look at the um, Eastern Young Cattle Index, um, which is how cattle prices, beef prices, are, are, are displayed in um, the eastern states, basically. And that's gone up 80%. Well, your price of meat hasn't gone up 80% in the supermarket. It's gone up quite a bit, but not that 80%. So their core costs have gone up. Now, I'm going to argue against myself. A lot of supermarkets don't actually buy through the market. They actually have contracts with farmers, which are much more stable. So even though these prices are bouncing around, they have locked in a price with a farmer one month, six months, 12 months in advance. So it doesn't matter if the price goes up or down. Effectively, they're getting the meat at the same price anyway. So th th there's a, like I said, I'm, I'm almost arguing against myself within that. But to just... Blanket point out, right, you know, Coles and Woolworths, you're the big bad wolf in this example because your price gouging is absolute garbage. Have a look at the taxes that are being forced onto us. Have a look at the, all those extra etc. that the governments are pushing down, our, are pushing down the throats of businesses and that's where a lot of the increases are. You really want to get me burning, let me drag out how much our payroll tax has increased over the last 12 months. It's horrendous. Our land tax, and for those that say, well, you shouldn't be paying land tax, you shouldn't be some wealthy landlord. Actually, we operate businesses in this state, and those businesses don't operate in some fairy land cloud. They operate from physical premises. Premises? Premises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to pay the land tax on that. So, you know, it's not... It's not how they portray these humongously landy, wealthy landlords, it's the average business owner and, and people like that that are having to put up with these things. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Covered both sides of the story. That was... Yeah, yeah I, I argue against himself. He, yeah. he didn't even have to drag <laughs> exactly. Matt in just, to argue the other side. I just got to relax. <laughs> Sit on the sidelines. Let's get on to some uh, serious topics for a while. Yeah, what else have we got, Ruben? I feel like we've only started the stream and we're... We're an, an hour, hour in. in, yeah. <laughs> well, let's begin. I want to, um, uh, uh, I want to lead in with this one. I'm, I'm not sure how far we're going to go into this, but I want to um, get some people to ease off the heat against uh, Germania. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> we had um, we had the video uh, with their CEO uh, back in Berlin at the start of the year, um, and during that interview, um, he says that um, basically he's going to give us um, the 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 Berlin bar, the, the Berlin bar, um, which was the, the bar for that event, which sold out super, super quickly. The, the number one certificated um, bar, he was going to just give us that one. Um, and we haven't really spoken about it too much since. There was something that came up and um, we, we haven't um, been able to, to, to actually follow through with that. 
from the sounds of things, it is still happening. Um, so for everyone that was like, yeah, we're, gonna, we're not going to buy anything, Germania, until, uh, <laughs> until they say it, it, it's got nothing to do with that. Apparently, it was just a, um, a slip up. We've been in contact. Um, and after we get confirmation that it is 100%, we've got it in hand, whatever, I think we will show everyone what, what, what happened and uh, we'll have a little bit of a chuckle about it because it, it, it is quite funny. I do have the clip if Michael wanted me to play it now. but um, it, it wasn't me smuggling it off. <laughs> yeah, no. To my own collection. Um, <laughs> there was a, a little bit of accusations of that, like, oh yeah, Michael's just grabbed it. <laughs> I hadn't actually. So if you were hanging out, to. if you were <laughs> hanging out for that one, um, yeah, hang hang fire. It, it, it seems it is uh, still on the way, so we're, we're yeah. excited for that one. Can I acknowledge the chat is going wild about the <laughs> kangaroo design? Yes. Need I remind everyone <laughs> oh, that, that, is, kangaroo. that is an award-winning design, <laughs> the red <laughs> kangaroo. And here's the problem, right, Michael? You're, in, you're, you're you know, you're getting all, oh, you're, you're <laughs> oh, not excited about it. Here we go, Matt's on it. soapbox. <laughs> the problem is, here in Australia, that's our, for lack of a better term, it's our national bullion coin, right? So that's, yes, that's what we see is. more common in the store. That's hmm. the most commonly seen, probably bought and sold coin that we have here. I We need to get... I'll say Canada because I love Canada. I've never even been there, but the, the, the <laughs> Mint do some fantastic work. I would like to speak to a Canadian bullion dealer and hear their thoughts. I want to hear from some other... Next time, next World Money Fair, do, do a survey when you speak to other bullion dealers and find out what they think of it. Because I think... Of the Australian one or yeah, of the Canadian um, maple? No, nah, everyone loves the Canadian maple. goes without <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> what, but I think... No bias there at all. <laughs> Well, I wonder if Canadians are sort of indifferent towards it and they have mm. the, sa- the same view of it. I just wonder if it's one of those things where you're too close to it to make an informed decision. But having said that, I love it. I think the kangaroo is a fantastic design and it feels distinctly so you, Australian. Like, take away the award winning and all that sort of stuff because you're 100% right. Mm. In isolation, in and of itself, do you like the kangaroo design? Yes. There's a, there's a survey, whatever you call it. Yeah, a, a poll. A poll. <laughs> You uh, you like the kangaroo design? Yeah. How could you not? What's wrong with it? It's a ripper. It's boring. Um, <laughs> but it's not meant to be. It's not a. It's not a numismatic design. You know what I it's mean? Absolutely it's not, a, it's, not a numismatic it, design. It, it needs to be. It needs to be practical and functional to be a mass-produced bullion coin, right? So it. it it, yeah, it just ticks all the boxes for me. I love the the radials. The radial lines. I think that it's sufficiently unique to not be a generic boring bullion coin but it's uh and you know it's got the little micro letter on it and it's 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 cool i don't know what when, what's not when, to like oh, right. why am i selling why do i feel like a salesman <laughs> given <laughs> given your take on it how long do you think that that should run for do you think you know 100 years you know yeah forever 100 years into the future they should still be making does yeah, it does absolutely. it deserve an update at any point no we know way. how big of a fan you are One on time, the, maybe all right we know how big deal. of a fan you are of updates on the sovereign and, uh, and yeah, yeah, things yeah, like you, that you, so, absolutely you've that's got I'm, me you've that's got me going that's exactly what i was going to say 125th anniversary Perth Mint. Let's go, new kangaroo. Do it for milestones or an, an anniversary of of the kangaroo. It was 19, 1990. Here we go. He's, he's, oh, he I should know with... this. Nineteen ninety. Maybe that was a kookaburra. Maybe it was nineteen ninety three. Yeah, we've just broken through forty four dollars an ounce. Yeah, you heard it here first live. <laughs> Silver skyrocketing. See, yes. what do you think of your silver kangaroos now, guys? Look, I, yeah, looking pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I, the yes I, is winning. I'm, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised at that, 43%. Um, I don't like the yes. design. <gasps> oh, I like great. the functionality of the design. And I think you're 100% mm-hmm. right. If Everyone's heard me say this before, and I'm going to upset everyone again. The Perth meat kangaroo is too cheap. The silver one we're talking about, not mm. the gold here. Yeah. So it's too cheap. At, at spot price at 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As the premium above spot, oh, right, right. <laughs> it's too cheap. It should be a, a lot more. But Perth yep. Mint, for bless their cotton socks, that's the way they've decided to do it. And that's great. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason they can do it so cheap is because they don't have to pay for a designer to come up with a new design. Mm-hmm. They don't have to pay for new dyes to be made. They yep. don't have to do all this sort of stuff. So from that perspective, I really like the fact that they've picked a design that's functional. You're right. Mm. It's got the radials on it. It's got the security features, all that sort of stuff. They've mm. got a basic design that they can just keep plugging out year after year after year and still keep that cheap government-issued one ounce of silver come hell or high water. It's a cheap price. And I think it's great from that. 
But would I hang one up in my study and go, wow, look at that? Uh-uh. Where's your patriotism, Michael? <laughs> so what would you hang up in your study? What, what coin Yeah, is... what absolutely just takes your breath away. And when you saw it first, you thought, that is there, an absolute ripper. coins that I like. Canadian maple, maybe? <laughs> of that, of that, let's say, national bullion that, okay. range. Okay, yeah, see, that was... Because I was going to lead off with the one that I rabbit on about frequently, the, the Lunar Dragon minted, that, minted bar that mm. Perth Mint did this year. I think, yeah. that's, I think that's a bee's knees. I love... And oh, I really, really, really want to show this one, but it doesn't get released till next month and we're still under embargo. Yeah. But the 125th gilded coin yeah, in silver. Yeah, that's going to be oh, so cool. Well, I mean... That is, oh, I realize, mate. <laughs> I realize you're referring to something particular here, Michael, but it is the kind, people know what the 125th design is. <laughs> yeah, I know, but the, the way they've, <laughs> yeah, I know. we're under embargo, so yeah, I, yeah. I can't, you know, go, oh, it's got this and it's got that and it does this and, you know, all this sort of stuff. But it's just, like, if the coin is half as good as the artist's image, it's going to pop. And yeah. the, it's limited, I think it's two and a half thousand of them. So yeah, I think it's, you're right, yeah. It's going to, like we're back in, you know, off like a frog in a sock territory. It's yeah. just gonna crack on that one. <laughs> so it's that type of stuff where yeah. they've actually got some creativity within the design that I absolutely love. Whereas mm. the kangaroo, like I said, it's it's like comparing, you know, your your runabout car to your you know your special X Y G T exactly that you polish every every weekend <laughs> yeah, and yeah. take out and on sunny days. But in that regard, let's go just straight bread and butter. National bullion coins. Which, uh, which of those knocks your socks off? If the kangaroo does absolutely nothing, I love the for philharmonic. You. Oh yeah, all right, yeah, <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah, and for the longest time, and I'm not the only one. I know possibly even Ruben may have felt the same way. I always thought it was a gate. I've heard so many. The I thought gate, it was their bank. The bank, really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's no it's idea that, that was an organ. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Another and fun I've, fact. I've still done that. And I've known that for years. And there are, we if you go back through the bullion now, yeah. like unboxings, you'll see me, oh, look and look at the, you know, look at the, the central bank or whatever I, I call it on there. <laughs> and there's, you know, the, the chat lights up I with you like, Muppet. You know, it's an organ. I go, ah, I know that. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think there's different videos where you've called, called it a gate in one, you know, <laughs> the right. organ in the other. Yeah. Uh, the pressure of being in front of the camera yeah, under the, the stress, lights, man. The it's lights are bright. <laughs> not enough, not enough water. <laughs> um, I want to take a moment to hit before we get to the, um, the 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 rapid fire questions at the end. I wanted to hit a couple of people's hey, where where is this up to? Um, kind of questions. Uh, good on you. Mm. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's um, the no, weekly fine. roast. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. All right. Metal Inquisitor is ever the fan of the Asahi Gold Rectangular Dragons. Mm. Wants to know if uh, we've uh, chased those up at all. No, the the issue we're having is um i don't know how much information i'm allowed to give on this um we're having a slight uh issue with our account um in that they are required to collect certain data from us which they do around the world yeah um like every every bullion organization whether it be a refinery or a um you know a manufacturer or a or a wholesaler or a retailer or anything like that we all have to swap kyc's and all that sort of stuff Unfortunately, I don't know if it's because Asahi is you know, originally Japanese or, or what it is, but they require a couple of documents that do not exist in Australia. Um, one of them is a certified document. It's got to be certified, I think, by a government organisation, certified that you are not sourcing um, precious metals from a conflict area. Well, we don't. We, we buy from the Perth Mint and we buy from... But there is nothing in Australia that allows us to be certified to show that we can't that we don't mm. do that so just, just your signature with a yeah no we're not doing yeah. that <laughs> yeah. so there's this there's this back and forth going on between us at the moment trying to work out how we actually satisfy their leg their legislative requirements and and still allow us to trade with them so yeah we're having a couple of issues there we might have to circumvent the system and go through a third party or something along those sort of lines for um clipso moon asked before if i could ask about any update to the uh to a potential sydney store or or the new store in general yep this guy <laughs> hard work huh <laughs> apparently um hang in there more so- information coming very soon <laughs> hey um, someone else was asking about the the UFO coins. Now I thought you'd you'd come on the stream a little while ago and said basically 
no dice, couldn't get a hold of them, completely no. But I overheard you in the hallway the other day talking to someone about them, and it sounded Maybe. and it sounded could be an invasion of foot. <laughs> like you you might have had a, a line on some. So what's the what's the go? Is is it uh, something w- that might be possible? Is it's it possible I'll accept. Um, but until I get a tracking number or they turn up here, I'm not going to admit to them. So we are tracking them down. I love them. I want at least one just for me, but I'll bring in <laughs> as many as I can. <laughs> Um, would we ever get in Kilo Libertads? Uh, absolutely we would. Um, that's another one that I really like. Mm. If you're going to go government yeah, issues, it's a Libertad. really nice. Um, and Michael Carroll is asking about the Cod Bars. Yeah. yeah. All the um, duty ones. Yeah. <sighs> there was a bit of a mix-up with those. Um, we, we're absolutely getting them, so don't panic about that. We've, we've got our allocation, but I actually thought we'd, we'd place the order and we'd had the tracking number. Again, another conversation I'd had as part of the meeting with ads this morning um, was that there's been a communication breakdown and we're not sure exactly where they are at the moment, so, but they're still coming. Um, it's just going to be a slight delay on them. So what you're saying is we've missed the call of duty and uh, we've missed the call that's now the voicemail of duty. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the one. Very 100%. Clear. Sorry, I had to uh, uh, throw that in there. Um, the other story that I wanted to... Well, actually, you, you kind of brought to my attention, Michael, um, was in relation to um, the the big kind of cash is king movement. Let's uh, pull all of our cash out of ATMs. Um, and there's kind of been a bit of a front runner for that kind of movement. Um, and it's 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 there's there's been some news come out about it slash him. And I'll quickly throw that up and I'll, I'll get you to explain further because you wanted to take this in a, in a bit of a direction. Yeah, look, I... I actually applaud what this guy's doing. So it sounds like I'm having an attack, like I'm attacking him, and I'm actually not meaning to attack him. Um, it just highlights something that you've got to be really careful of, particularly in the bullion industry, but in, in life in general. So this gentleman gets on many of the newses and current affairs and breakfast shows and those types of things, and he's quoted as saying, you know, we got to get out there. We've got to use more cash. You know, you, we should have a... And I think they organised a all-cash day or something like that yeah. where everyone went out and withdrew money from their ATMs and all this type of stuff. And I'm supporting what he's doing. But he, he's not... If he's asked about it, he doesn't deny it or anything along those lines. He's quite happy to talk about it. But he's not up front. He doesn't lead with the fact that he's actually sponsored by or employed by um, one of the ATM companies. So he's got a bit of a conflict of interest there um, or a bias there. And I don't want to have a go at him. That's not what I'm trying to do here. But what I'm saying is whenever you're talking to someone about these types of things, but particularly about your investments in bullion, you've got to understand what bias they're coming from. Now, it doesn't mean the information they're giving you is wrong, but you need to know where they're coming from. So anything that I say, I'm a bullion dealer. I own a, I own a bullion store. Everything that I tell you has that flavor to it. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't ever buy gold. You know, it's a terrible thing because I sell the stuff. You know, that's how we make our living. So everything that I say to you has got that flavor to it. And I was saying to Matt earlier on when we were having a bit of a discussion about this, saying, you know, Matt's a coin guy. I'm a bar stacker kind of guy. So when Matt and I talk, I know that the information he's giving me comes with a, a bit of a twist mm. towards the coin side of the, the, the market. Whereas Matt knows when he's talking to me that the stuff that I'm saying comes with a, a twist away from the coins and more towards the bars and the stacking because that's my bent. It doesn't mean the information we're giving each other is incorrect or you know terrible or anything along, along those sort of lines, but it just means you need to understand where their biases are. And this goes particularly when you're talking investments and money, but it goes throughout life. You know, When you're talking to your brother-in-law at the family barbecue, you need to know what spin he's putting on whatever he's saying to you because it may impact the information and the way you apply it in, in your life. So just be aware when you read a lot of these articles, look at where, like read a little bit deeper and just say, okay, this sounds really good, but what, what's his bias? What, what's her bias? What's their bias? What, what are they, why are they saying it this way? And then when you've worked that out, so this guy's employed by, um, by, I don't know if he's employed or sponsored by, but receives funding in some form by the, from the ATM companies. Um, okay, well, that's fine, but does that change the information he's given me? Well, no, actually, I'd, I'd like to see more cash in the community, and I think this is a really good idea. So what if he's paid by the by the ATMs? I still think it's it applies. In my life, I'd like to actually go out and I'd like to withdraw more cash and actually use it more than I use my cards. That's all that I was trying to highlight with this is just be aware of the various biases that are going on in the backgrounds. 
Yeah, and I mean that's a, a great skill to have. Just media, you know, wh- whatever media you're consuming, um, and just interacting with people on a daily basis. It's always good to to uh, to have that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Um, what are we looking at here? Um, I owe an apology to a couple of people. There's a there's a couple of emails um, that um, there's there's particularly one I'm thinking of, and that's Luke who sent in a photo um, that will be going up on next week's stream. Sorry, I haven't uh, got to that one yet. See um, what we have to work with. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> um, and there's also uh, one to Michael who sent in some um, some AI designs for a, for a coin, um, which it's kind of been very interesting to to watch because that's a, a segment we've done a couple of times. And kind of AI as as AI has been getting better, I've kind of seen the the designs that it's been spitting out get get better and better over time. So um, yeah, I'll I'll make sure that is a um, a, a dedicated thing um, uh, for for next week. Um, one of the other things that someone mentioned before um, was uh, Andrew, um, who works his price prediction, um, I think, towards the end of the year, but of silver being at $50 an ounce and it kind of seeming very far-fetched and, and no way... You I know, think I slightly ridiculed him over yeah, it, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> only, only a couple of months ago. Um, and that's it. Don't, um, look, I, don't I, I look like the right Muppet now. <laughs> I saw someone saying before, yeah, def- definitely feeling within grasp at the moment, even if uh, we're not yeah. there yet. Um, so. I, did, I, I thought we could go to 35 this year but I didn't like 3500 in gold mm. I didn't think we'd get anywhere beyond that and I mean we blasted straight through 3500 we're through 36 and mm. we're now nudging towards 3700 so yeah it's you know it, it's not impossible that we see four grand before the end of end of the month never mind the end of the year yeah so no, you should learn that, Michael. Like when you were talking about it'll never go past a hundred to one, the ratio. And <laughs> you need to sort of manage your, you know, your predictions in that sense. Yeah. Well, I said it before on camera. <clears throat> um, one of my wife's investment strategies for quite a long time was to do the complete opposite of what <laughs> I did, and embarrassingly, she was very successful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Keitho has called uh, me out on something that we slipped up with um, this week. Um, curiously, what happened to the website live auction that was meant to happen this week? Um, there was supposed to be a couple of items go up. Um, I think in the, the the photos, they've all kind of been prepped. We're ready to go. Um, but yeah, there's. Uh, I think Adam's just kind of been a little bit run off his feet this week and it hasn't been something he's, uh, he's gotten to. But um, the items are still there, ready to go. So keep an eye out. I'm not sure exactly when we're going to have those up, but they, they are... They are going to be going up soon. So, well, I wasn't lying when I said it, but yeah, we we did slightly get the time wrong on uh, when it was going to be. Mike's also wanting to know if there's been any news on the 2024 Dragon Minted Bars. Mm. They're they're I was going to say yearly Dragon Bar as opposed to the um. Oh, the, sorry, we're the talking rectangular the rectangular one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's coming. We don't have a release date yet, though. But we we do anticipate it coming. Uh, there's a couple of questions on there I'd like to hit. So yeah. Metal Inquisitor, any insight on Perth Mint's $5,300 price point for their one ounce gold proof? We touched on this uh, last week, I think it was, or the week before, yeah. where Perth Mint's actually increased their their uh, recommended retail pricing on their numismatic coins. Citing an increase um, in spot price. Yeah, because you've got to remember that numismatic dealers, so we've got a foot in both camps here because we've got Bullion now, which is a bullion dealer, and we our sister company is Little Coin Shop, which is a numismatic dealer. So with Bullion... The price that we pay is based on spot price up and down and the price that we sell at is based on spot price. So we always keep uh, a, a percentage or a chunk of the premium that's um, over and above the spot price that moves up and down. So it's almost, it doesn't matter what price Perth Mint charge us for this example um, because it, it kind of just fluctuates with, with this spot price. When you're buying numismatics, your purchase price is based on the spot price, so it moves up and down, but your recommended retail price is fixed. So when spot jumps from $3,000 an ounce to $3,500 an ounce, your your cost of, to purchase goes up by $500, but your sale price doesn't go anywhere. So you've just lost $500 straight off your bottom line. So Perth Mint's recognised that, and because of this increase in spot, they've increased their recommended retail because otherwise the um, the numismatic retailers go broke fairly rapidly because they they do make far greater margins than the um, than the bullion guys do, but they will hold their coins like we we churn thousands of coins a day, whereas a numismatic dealer would churn tens or hundreds, not tens of hundreds, just tens mm. or hundreds in a day. Um, you know, probably 5% of what we turn over in a day. But 
so they have far higher holding costs. Um, so that's why the uh, the prices jumped to that 5300. Um, there was another one there uh, from Michael Carroll. Hi, Michael. If a customer were to buy gold bars overseas and sell them to you, would you pay above spot? Rare brands such as Rand, Atmex. Um, we probably wouldn't. Um, particularly Rand, um, not so much, but Atmex is not an uncommon um, bar. It's not particularly rare, but the bars... <sighs> Bars aren't usually rare. It's old, old bars, some of the old bars are, and, and they certainly, like Bullion now wouldn't pay extra for them, but I've been known to go, ooh, because I, <laughs> I, I like the old vintage bars. Um, but bars aren't t don't tend to be rare as much as they're too expensive for us to import. So I had uh, several conversations with um, some of the, the Bullion bar brands um, that we don't see in Australia. I had quite a lot of conversations with them when we were in Germany um, at the World Money Fair about bringing them into Australia. And it was effectively, you know, unless you're going to bring in large quantities, humongous quantities, it's really not worth it. Um, on the, the, the amount they charge you is not worth it. So it's not that they're rare, that they're hard to get. It's just they're rare as in we don't see them here because none of us import them. So it's very unlikely that we would end up paying more than spot for them. Yeah, just clarified rare in terms of ones you don't see in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's purely, there's no, we could see plenty of them in Australia if someone was just willing to commit that level of, of money at them hmm. um, to, to bring in a fairly large shipment because you are talking millions of dollars um, as a minimum order quantity for them. And uh, they don't just turn up the next day and you can start selling them. That millions of dollars is out there for several weeks before you actually get delivery of them. And then you've got to move them and you're only making very small margins on them. So it's just not worth doing. BDK, sorry, I know you're going for a drink of water there, Michael. Um, BDK <laughs> wants to know if uh, you still think we will never go under $3,000 Australian again. I don't think we will, um, but we've just gone through the mistakes I've made on, yeah. on price so predictions. It's highly possible. <laughs> <laughs> Do the opposite. Yeah. I, I'm not going to be completely, you know, stunned with disbelief if we do. But I think, you know, we've we've run up pretty hard. But to go from 3600 back down to you know year 2900, that's mm. a fairly big drop. You know, you're talking, you're getting close to that 20% drop um, just to do yeah. that. That that's a big movement in in gold terms. Mm. Having said that, we're currently going through a fairly big movement in gold gold terms, but it, it's not normal. So I'd be very surprised. It wouldn't shock me if we pulled back to thirty two, thirty three hundred dollars an ounce. Um, but I don't. I, the problem is we're talking in Australian dollars, um, and we all know that the base price, like the base pricing of gold, is in US dollars. So you're not only talking about the price of gold dropping; you're also talking about the Australian dollar strengthening. Um, and while I don't believe that would happen, it, it adds an extra complication to this discussion. Uh, Mr. Nice Guy One, will you pay spot price for dirty coins, Michael? Yes. Keeps it nice and easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, James Howitt, um, are they going to do a silver version of the gold dragon bar? That would be fantastic. So are I think. We there's Which a bit, one are we talking about? Well, that's yeah. your <laughs> favourite one, I'm assuming. I think he's talking about a silver the, version of, the, the, one, Luna. of yeah. the Luna one that you like as opposed to their regular rectangular... It, they um, certainly have not indicated that that's their intent. But it absolutely would be cool. And yeah. I would <laughs> it would be very would cool. Fantastic. It'd be yeah. very popular too if they pitched it at the right price. Yeah. There. Um. Oh, interesting one here from Roddy. Fellas, I saw a post saying storing coins long-term in felt bags uh, causes milk spotting. Any truth to this? No, it doesn't cause milk spotting. It can co certainly cause toning, though, uh, depending on the chemicals. Yeah, the, the like what's in that felt bag and how how long you store it and the the temperature, all that sort of jazz. It certainly won't cause milk spotting. But I've seen plenty of coins that when you do pull it out after quite some time, some of the color or whatever it is inside the bag is leaked onto the coin, mm. and you can some people. Don't mind a bit of toning. So, you know, it can add a little bit of character <laughs> to a coin. So, you know, an otherwise boring award-winning kangaroo one out <laughs> silver <laughs> might have, you know, a nice purple hue to it. Yeah, so I've got one, or I had one in the office. Um, it's gone into the buyback bucket. But yeah. um, it's on the reverse side of it, the the colorations yeah. that were going through it were just... Somebody's obviously left it on a surface where it's reacted. Yeah. It looks... It's got oranges in it and browns and yeah. purples and it just looks the bee's knees. And that's big business in the US, uh, particularly in the numismatic community. The US silver dollars, 
uh, Heritage did a whole auction catalogue with squillions of these beautifully toned silver dollars and they fetched crazy money. It's a really... Uh, it's Eclectic like a, artistic market. Yeah, it's, it's a market. niche within a niche and yeah, it's very, very interesting. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Felt bags. Will they cause spotting, milk spotting? Oh, yeah. So, no, generally, from what I've gathered from doing a little bit of research, it's often seemingly attributed, and this is why we need a metallurgist to come on and give us a little, some definitive answers, but my limited understanding is that it most likely has something to do with the annealing process. Mm. So, when, when they're heated up and then when the, they go through a, a bit of a chemical wash, that if there's any of that um, residue remaining on the blanks, that it's a, and that's why we often say it's a foregone conclusion. So you can store your coin beautifully, but there can still be signs of milk spotting, which would have been there. They would have been present at the time that the coin was struck, but it just becomes a little more apparent over time. So um, predestined. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, do we pay spot price for gold proof coins? Uh, yes, we do. This is kind of very quickly blending oh, into the, the rapid fire those, questions. We yeah. didn't bring those gold coins. We got um, so somebody sold in yesterday, I believe, but very recently, two complete sets: the two thousand and five mm. and two thousand and seven. That's the ones. Gold proof sets. Proof RAM sets. Mm. So they're they're gold examples of circulating currency coins. Absolutely is, stunning. Yeah, and it's so funny. For the longest time, they were viewed as a dud. They were sort of like the... Um, Have that, has that changed? Yeah, wow. Well, 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 yeah, master, because you, the this masterpieces. is... The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is one of those things where they were, you know, $5,000 for a set and people thought, oh, no, I've... Done I've, me I've, dough. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've whiffed it. And then, you know, I think those sets were... Well, we worked it out. It's a bit, it's well over ten thousand dollars just yeah, it was in spot. One hundred thirteen grams of gold. So yeah, it's spot. That's you know getting up at that thirteen, fourteen gram yeah. mark. Yeah. So 12, 13, yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> spot's moving too quickly to do it these is. guesses at the moment. Um, yeah, but they they are stunning coins. But mm. as a as a gold investment, they've done well. As a proof investment yeah. or a numismatic investment, they've done lousy. Yeah, yeah, which is. Not uncommon for the vast majority of those sets. And I think they used to do them, they used to do mintages of about 500, then yeah. it dropped to 250. Now I think they're down to 100. It may even be 50 now. It's 50 or 100 yeah, that they do okay. of the gold proof sets each year. Because I think you're, in, you're entering a very, it's almost a niche within a niche because there is the bullion component. But then if you have an interest in numismatics, a lot of those people aren't necessarily willing to part with, I think the retail is about 12 and a half grand on a... The, probably more the, than yeah, that well, now. it's probably yeah gone up again. So maybe you're closer yeah. to fifteen grand for the set. And there's a lot of other nifty proofs that you could pick up for that kind of money. So yeah. Yeah, it's an it, interesting. It one. is. It's a big money. F it's big money for a set. So it's mm. a very small market for it. Yeah. But it, it's also it doesn't have a history of doing well. So exactly. Yeah. So you know, the, there's no there's no expectation of it doing well going forward. It's not like you know you can say well the lunar coin quite often does you know x yeah. y and z so it's worth a punt. This one, you go, well, they've been lemons the whole way along. But then, it, well, I wonder if it's one of those things where, you know, as the mintage contracts, although at what point is it not even viable? You know, like we've uh, speculated in the past, would, would there, could there reach a point where they just say, oh, it's not worth doing? Or does the premium shoot up because they only make five of them? And yeah, then it becomes then, red hot. I don't think it'll become red hot. I, I think it's right. too high a price point with, mm. with not a good history. I just don't think it's going to run hard. Yeah. Um, Adam must have been overhearing us because um, it looks like there is now um, one of the auctions we were, we were hinting at for last <laughs> oh, week there you go. is now up um, on there. You have to actually be logged into your Bullion Now account to actually see it. I, um, I just realized that it was looking up blank and I was saying, I can't see anything, mate. Um, but yeah, you, you do actually have to be logged in. But we've got a uh, one ounce kangaroo, a little bit of an interesting buyback that's up there. So, so let me tell um, you what happened in the back room. Simon's got this playing on his computer. And he's yep. gone, Oi, Ads, what was happening with that? And Ads has gone, Oh, no! <laughs> he face don't drop what he's doing. <laughs> right, oh, it's up there. It's up. It was always up there. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I Just think refresh that was your screen, don't worry. <laughs> pretty much exactly what happened. Um, people are calling you out a little bit, uh, Matt, about your felt bag comment. Um, and they are bringing up the 1966 round 50 cent proof coins as the, uh, the, the counter argument to that. 
Uh, What's the argument? What well, was my I'm argument? Guessing, what was I'm my guessing stand? that they they're milk spot though. Well, I'm guessing that mm. the 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 thing is that they were in felt bags. I'm guessing is what yeah, they, they were. No, they, they weren't in felt bags. They were in felt boxes. Well, ah, okay, but that's they, right. did yeah. they? <laughs> but they didn't milk spot, did they? They toned a lot of goat, goat, they toned goat, yeah. goat said one yeah. side is always more toned than the others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's but the that's one that's what... exposed to the elements. So that's not milk spotting. That's a different. That's a different thing entirely. But those proof sets, a number of them were fully intact. It depended on how you stored them and if whether or not you had them open regularly and things like that. But certainly in you know tip-top shape, they're very, very collectible. But yeah, I'd, I'd, the, two, uh, the two things are not related in my opinion. Look, so many... You, you've got to remember so many different things can cause toning and, and mm. milk spotting for that matter, but particularly toning. <coughs> Excuse me. It's... um. It's the elements that's it, that that coin is exposed to along the whole process. And the longer you go along in time, I, I would argue eventually it's going to tone. Like mm. any coin, no matter, almost no matter how it's stored, is eventually going to tone in some form because there's chemicals and things for it to react with both on mm. your skin, in the manufacturing process, in the box itself, in the environment, you're, in the air that you're storing it in. Like yeah. there's so many things that can react with it that eventually it's going to happen anyway. Some things just make it happen a bit more quicker and sometimes a bit more spectacularly, spectacularly yeah, well than others. <laughs> <laughs> um, Droga's figured out that our little coin shop has free shipping. <laughs> they do. Um, hence, you know, like the, the margins are bigger on numismatics so they can afford to, to ship out and for free. So before anyone asks, because this question always comes up of, well, if it's your sister company, can I ship my bullion with Bundle my it? numismatics yeah. <laughs> and get free postage? Absolutely not. And they, it's don't, not they don't play nice in the post together. Yeah, yeah. It's got nothing to do with the cost. It's got everything to do with the fact that your kilo bar of silver has just completely smashed and destroyed whatever numismatic yeah. box and product well, that you that had sense, in the same yeah, thing. then you, it's entirely a bullion delivery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so, and it, no matter how hard we nail down that kilo bar, <laughs> it always finds a way to yeah. move when they use it to play football or whatever the <laughs> courier guys do these days. Yeah. Are you going to do 100,000 questions in 10 seconds? We're getting there. <laughs> um, one more from Wombat um, about Little Coin Shop. Does LCS pay more for collector coins or only spot? No, look, LCS doesn't. It does do. No matter how I answer, how I answer this question, I'm lying. It doesn't. LCS doesn't do a lot of buybacks. Um, it leaves that alone because LCS is predominantly an online store. So it's very difficult to assess buybacks from an online situation. Um, because there is so much that goes into it's not like a lump of gold where we don't care what it looks like it's still got the same value to us because bullion now pays spot with that it's you know is there a crease on the box is there a you know a fading on mm. some certain area has it got toning what we've just talked about you know has somebody held it the wrong way has it got a fingerprint near it has it got you know all these things that you can't assess so as a rule lcs doesn't do a lot of buybacks but it does do some Sometimes it only pays spot. Sometimes it pays less than spot, believe it or not. And sometimes it will pay more for spot. But yeah, it, LCS doesn't do a lot of buying back. All righty. Let uh, let's head into some rapid fire questions, I think. So if there's been a question you've been asking all stream and uh, we've missed it or um, yeah, you want us to, to, to touch on something, um, ask it now and we will finish off the stream with a whole bunch of questions um, very quickly. All right. Uh, Sam wants to know if we're going to open a store in Adelaide. Oh, eventually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Metal Inquisitor wants to know how they buy that RAM set. I think they're talking about the uh, the 2005, 2007 we were talking about before. Uh, flick us an email. We can do it. I don't know what the price will be. It'll be a little bit over spot because obviously we're a business and we want to make a profit and we paid spot for it. Which so. which days do does BN ship out? Uh, we definitely ship out. Ship, yeah, watch your <laughs> language there, boy. <laughs> we definitely ship out. <laughs> On a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday, and then others as required. We do not, as a rule, we do not ship on a Friday <laughs> <laughs> because we don't like things sitting in couriers, vans, and depots and all that sort of stuff over the weekend. Um, so where does LCS get its stock? <laughs> Say that again. Where does Little Coin Shop get its stock? Uh, various mints and refineries and wholesalers around the world. Uh, when are we getting more larger gold bars in stock? Always, every day. 
Um, any update on the Tudor Dragons? We've got kilo bars arriving early next week. That's not the answer to the question. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. Yeah, stay on task. <laughs> um, Tudor Dragons. What about them? Uh, when are we getting that? When's the delivery? I'm the foggiest. Okay. Um, <laughs> when is LCS getting a new website? Oh, soon, please, Lord, soon. Um, what do the one ounce Libertads come in? I think like capsules, flips. Like that's the that's the question. How do how do the uh, one ounce Libertads come? Tubes. Yeah. Twenty yeah. five. Um, chicken Not or the egg came done. first. Uh, same answer as last week. Um, airlines make and lose lots of dollars hedging fuel. Is it the same with gold hedges? Oh, so much. Um, when is Perth Mint producing 10 ounce bars again? I will have to offload a heap of 2020 bars before they do. Uh, very soon. Um, is the gold 125th coin coming out in a quarter ounce? Oh, that's a good question. No, I don't believe it is. Um, no. Gold price prediction for the end of the year? I give up. My call was 3,500. Um, is the Ram in that Luna sense, you've succeeded. Well done. <laughs> Pat on the back. <laughs> is the Ram Luna coin in or or were you thinking of getting them in? We, uh, we got them in. Yeah, yeah they, they came, came in. They came gone. and gone, yeah. Um, not getting Michael started on, on dark matter. Um, current buyback price for one ounce of gold, please. Um, that would be spot price. I don't know if you've, if you've got uh, Kiko so up there. Write this, uh, I don't know if this is updated, so, but it's within the last 10 or 15 minutes. $3,654 and $58, sorry, and 40 cents. Non-financial advice. Is it worth buying the fancy bullion dragon bars or better just to get plain bullion for investment? Um, which fancy bullion bars are the we talking about? The one that you about? love. The one that I... Absolutely, we did this every, last week. Yeah. Every day of the week, <laughs> I would buy those over the plain bars. You're going to yeah. pay 5 10 15 $20 maybe more for them. Mm. Um, that's your risk factor because they're always made of gold. But I personally believe this is not financial advice, that they are going to be um, very popular in the years to come. Uh, what's being released next week? The 10-ounce kookaburra. If we're able to say that, then yes. Um, and the week after, no, it's a, a week or two after that is mm -hmm. the 2024 koala. Koala, yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, Michael Effigy, when? Never. Uh, any pamp bars coming in? Yes. Uh, gold stand in the future, what do you think? No. Um, have you got uh, more un one ounce unallocated silver on the website now? Well, I no clue. <laughs> I'm doing this, mate. <laughs> Give me a break here. <laughs> um, is, is the five ounce Queen's Virtue series dead? I Ooh, believe so. Yeah. Ooh. That's grim wording. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Are we still getting a second store? We already have a second store. Oh, <laughs> here he goes. Uh, 125 year coming in at one kilo. Imagine that. Yeah, I, I don't. I haven't seen any data su to suggest that. Mm. I'd love to see it. Yeah. I'd love a 10 ounce one. Love a 10 ounce one. Perth Mint, if you're listening. Don't know what you're asking, Drew. If you were a gum tree, what gum tree would you be? <laughs> um, any, I don't know. <laughs> any more previous one ounce lunar gold and platinum coins coming on the website? Uh, probably. Um, Mr. Anderson says, uh, sorry, what coin had all the lunar animals on them? Matt reviewed it a few weeks ago, I think. That was the Royal that Australian the Mint. Yeah, um, that was cool. That was a fun lunar, video. Remember that? We lunar silver. jazzed it up, changed things up. That was a good one. Yeah, that was fun. Favorite pre decimal coin? Want to announce out of both of you? The, oh, I've done it again. Oh, you know, the one that on, went mate. 1937, 1938. The Crown. Thank you, The Crown. You the, think I, one of my favourites. You think I'd remember yeah, what it was. Yeah, really, really passionate about it. <laughs> uh, mine would be the Melbourne Centenary Florin, 1934, oh, that's nice. 35. Yeah, that's yeah. nice too. Is, that is, bar, is bar and coin buyback price the same? Yes, usually. Uh, strange as that's a very deep question what are your favorite coins to stack or collect i don't know if we can quickly give an answer to that one changes every week yeah that's uh, that's tricky that's that's a whole stream i reckon yeah uh, absolutely it depends on your reason um mm. you know at the moment i'm buying up um platinum uh, 125s because i think they're a they're a money spinner not financial advice um, and I'm buying up the Dragon uh, Lunar Dragon minted bars because I think, as I've said three times, I think three or four times in this stream alone, I think in the future, and it's going to take a couple of years, but I think in the future they're going to be a good one. Uh, yes, Casey, there will be an epic unboxing coming on those. Uh, Michael, uh, do we have an end uh, goal or ounce target or will you keep stacking forever? I think I'll keep stacking forever. Um, when are we coming to Brisbane for the next world tour? 
We don't even know if we're doing a world tour at this stage. I think, Funny, I think I've been I, hoping I was through asked that on, on the on the phone today. Yeah, I said Brisbane. No, um, oh yeah, I'm in Brisbane next week. Is it the end, end of the show? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, sure, yeah. There you go. There's a heads there you up. Go. You want to? It says that <laughs> not not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, so eight days time. I hope so. Yeah. So the does 20, that mean you're not in 20, next Friday? Uh, well, I'll be, yeah, I'll, I'll be on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't, unless, so yeah, breaking I can, news for yeah. all of us: Matt's not going to be here next live stream. <laughs> I'll see if I, I'll send Ruben something. Me sipping a coffee at the airport, <laughs> whinging about the quality or something. But the tw- yeah, the twentieth and twenty first. So if you want to catch up with Matt, be where in Brisbane when? It's QSAC, the Queensland Sports and Athletics Centre. It's actually a very snazzy venue. It's where they, mm-hmm. a lot of the athletes for the the uh, Commonwealth Games and whatnot do their training. So. I won't be one of the athletes, but I'll be there. <laughs> you don't take your speedos with you. <laughs> yeah, hanging out. Yeah. You, you should be a really missed the point of the rapid fire. Oh, yeah. Up. Sorry. What was <laughs> the question? No. I'm <laughs> Brisbane World Tour. Yeah, but we should do a world tour yeah. again soon. <laughs> Any East India bars coming in? Uh, not yet, but I'm hoping in the not too distant future. Have we got any new t shirts coming for 2024 so we can promote Bullion now? Yeah, oh, I'm thinking about yeah. a hoodie because I need something That'd for going good. up to the snow this yeah, year. Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> Melbourne Gold Festival by BN. Yes. Mm. Um, and any Royal Mint gold coming in? Yes. Uh, there's some, at least some Britannias coming in, 24 Britannias. All right. I think we need to start winding this up soon, but. Um, oh, really? Start soon. Um, there was one it. from Rick, and I, I did say this. This is another topic we have to get to, I think, maybe for next week. Did you guys see the Silver Hammer, the silver hammer Chisel and Wrench that was on a, a YouTube video recently? Someone, they're, they're like pure silver. No, I did no. not. There's, some, there's some, cool, some cool things. I need to get out more. <laughs> Um, if I bring in my 100 ounce silver bar would spot be paid and do you need notice before I bring it in 100 ounce is the maximum size bar that we guarantee to pay spot for um, Matt can you score a white coloured dragon at the Brisbane Ander uh, yes if you attend they're incredibly they're already impossible to get so you have to come along come on surely we know a guy oh yeah I would have thought so too <laughs> but it's gone absolutely bananas apparently everyone wants to buy silver dragons all of a sudden so um, and come when, on down when are we going back to visit the Perth Mint um, yeah. I'm hoping that's within the month I'm putting Ooh. the feelers out with um, with our contacts at the Perth Mint cool all right. Oh, one more from Bots and then that's it. We're calling it. Um, any update on GPS tracking on orders? We've talked about that a few times. Yeah, um, it's actually something that has come up this week um, for a good reason. So we are going to introduce it very, very soon. All righty, good stuff. Um, I think that's. I think that's it. Yeah, uh, that was bumper. This is the biggest stream <laughs> we've ever done, lads. That was good fun. Yeah. So as per usual, thank you very, very much for joining us. We um, we don't take it lightly. We are actually very uh, appreciative and honoured that people will tune in for an hour and a half and listen yeah. to us rabbit on about Going Brisbane. Going off the and, deep end. And yeah, <laughs> all sorts of soapboxes that we got on today. So we really do appreciate um, the fact that you tune in and, and join in with us. And and the fact that people actually join in, they get in the, in the, um, in the chat there and give us a, a bit of a hard time and ask yeah. us questions. Good. and congratulate us for certain things and on the odd occasion we get it right <laughs> so um thank you very much for joining us you guys make this stream unbelievable um thanks for you two joining in matt's not going to be here next week by the sounds of it yeah, it's a bit sad i was going to say i'll see you next week yeah see you next fortnight so we have might... to get alex or maybe someone that's yeah, a we'll... special guest we'll yeah see. it try could and, be exciting try and twist some arms and see who we can get in next week yeah we will be back same bat time same bat channel next week and it's da- what it's not daylight savings time anymore that's right. It is. So if you no, it's not. No, it's not. You goose. forget daylight savings. <laughs> so apologies to anyone who was Overseas, an hour early. Yeah. yeah, that's why. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's it. I know, Ribs. You got anything to throw in there? I don't think so. Well, um, yeah. Keep keep an eye uh, on the auctions the on, over on our website. Um, hopefully, uh, um, Adam will be now putting those up. So keep your eye out, and uh, yeah, we will uh, see you for for some more videos next week. Sounds good. See ya. See ya.